in in the first lockdown people were ha- ordering opedro and bombay canteen but we wanted to give them a new reason to order as well so right. in, in just in terms of the experience you can keep improving mm-hmm. but i feel in terms of choice and what you deliver also you need to keep evolving as well we can't say that the pandemic is now new we're very much into it it's been well close to 2 years now yeah so just want to you know kind of catch up on how the industry i mean it's not adapting anymore now i think we've adapted and now it's the how you know the way forward and the you know the way uh, we've kind of been adapting in the place we've reached now so just wanted to check in terms of you know all your properties uh, bombay canteen sweet shop o pedro uh, how exactly have you guys been scaling the operations you know to revise the cost you know because of the pandemics as in to be honest when when uh, <clears throat> i think the thought process has evolved like you said um, it's year 2 of us being in the pandemic i think year 1 was more about survival and in making sure there's just enough revenue coming in through the door uh, mm-hmm. for for us to bear our employee costs as such um in terms of what are we doing now to optimize costs i feel like over over the period of the year and a half we've changed the way we've looked at our own business uh, instead of being called a restaurant or a hospitality company we look ourselves to be more a uh, a day to see food product company and look at hiring key members within the team who come in with certain experience that will handle a part of that delivery experience right. now for delivery experience um, when it comes to uh, restaurants it's always been the standard you either use a mat or swiggy or a hmm. direct ordering tool order comes in at your restaurant and then it gets delivered right now um, right. within that to be honest um, cost of optimization typically for a brand like us um does not involve changing ingredients or food or any kind of uh, qualities in that manner neither actually i feel the packaging that we've used over the last 2 years has been more expensive than what we've used before because we've also right. seen that the cons- consumer and the customers become much more um environmentally aware in the kind of packaging they want to be seeing mm. uh, but what has helped is the use of technology for example um people like thrive.pay coming in um, mm-hmm. as direct ordering platforms which are uh, one the tech stack itself is not expensive um which earlier for restaurant or to do it on their own it would be quite expensive for them mm-hmm. right um so having those kind of startups coming into the hospitality restaurant industry has definitely helped um for us but more on the bombay sweet shop um uh, we look at it more from a d2c angle on how we can deliver our products all over india directly to a consumer uh we've just launched onto amazon as well right right also are thinking with the products we we've made sure that we have the right portfolio of the idea with bombay sweet shop is not using mm-hmm. any kind of preservatives um mm-hmm. in the product itself so if you look at traditional mithai or the way we make mithai the hmm. shelf life for that is normally 3 days but within that we also look at the portfolio of introducing things like the chikki the baks the karachi halwa jujubes right um things that work within the brand but naturally have a longer shelf life so when it comes to even the product development we start thinking from that perspective whereas 2 years ago we used to always think about fresh food from the restaurant itself hmm. but thinking about your product mix <clears> and how it gives you more legs to reach more households um and how you can um, survive within that i think that's what we've done honestly um when it came to cost measures i feel like the use of the thrives even for bombay sweet shop we use shopify um mm-hmm. using independent tools instead of being only dependent on the swiggy and zomatos of the world right so so these are platforms that you talked about in terms of yeah. tech that you know you are using but apart from that do you see uh, you, you know restaurants being more uh, you know relying more on tech in terms of food processing and uh, 3d automation do you see uh, a lot of that in the kitchens now i see in in terms of in india i i i don't i've not seen any kind of automation being used to be honest right. um right 
and i don't see that coming into play i have always been a again our brands are very experience driven so mm. um for me the person making the food has to taste it as well before they put it out um we've seen in western countries a lot of qsr uh, brands starting a lot of automation within the way the food is prepared but honestly i've been i i haven't seen it i feel from a cost optimization point of view i've seen more restaurants getting the right softwares and back end cost management systems to get better supply chain management okay uh um- you know so you said you you know you you guys are now retailing on amazon through bombay sweet shop and all and of course you know we are more delivery driven now than we ever yeah. were before uh in terms of creating the experience because you know i mean i've been to your outlets and i know it's a lot about the experience and not just the food uh how has the response been in terms of you know the people uh reacting to you know how the food's been delivered creating that same experience for them which they would otherwise have in the restaurant and of course you know you i think you guys also conducted some workshops right there were poor poor making yeah. workshops how was how was the yeah. response so to the workshops the response was amazing Mm-hmm. I also feel the timing of the workshops was something that was very important. I think the first lockdown people mm-hmm. were much more um inquisitive and a lot more people had time on their hands to do something right. different. Also there was a sense of fatigue of sitting at home and doing nothing. Right. Um that helped. When it came to second lockdown I feel a lot of people had gotten back to work mm-hmm. also. Um even if they were working from home and uh, a lot of you could see that if i could do four workshops in a week uh, second lockdown allowed us to do only two over the weekend because that's when people had time free mm-hmm. but yeah. the response was amazing like we hadn't expected the, the kind of response that we got um even for simpler workshops like making poi at home and poi is a very mm-hmm. specialized bread just the kind of interest that people had in it and more than that after the workshops when you saw on instagram people post about the poi's that they made at mm-hmm. home to show that you know the workshops were actually productive and not just right. being done for the sake of being doing so they right. honestly the the <clears throat> the response then was amazing now if you look at it from um the way you conduct a workshop is, or if you when you do delivery food uh, for mm-hmm. the past 2 years most of our restaurants have been empty right or right. the were not being 100% utilized so right. it was a great way of utilizing the team that you had the space that you had the ingredients that you had mm-hmm. now comes the next challenge to what you are saying is um when dine in starts automatically across the board for any brand delivery um revenue does drop and that's natural because you're at the end going after a certain market now if that market is uh, or the consumer is dining in house then right. you're going to lose out on his or her delivery business but when it came to delivery <laughs> for us what was important was um there's a sense of goodwill and loyalty that both our brands especially bombay canteen and opedro being restaurants mm-hmm. have and like how do you convey that same uh goodwill loyalty safety measures when it comes to delivery right in the right. in the i think over over the last year it's diluted a bit but in the first year of the pandemic people were extremely aware extremely conscious yeah. about the hygiene element and how do you convey that without mm. scaring people so just the kind of collateral that goes with the packaging um and like i said we we relooked at our entire packaging and also brought about a much more happier element to it in the colors we were using in the designs that we wanted um right. I think the simpler things that people caught up to also which we started on were like having a Spotify playlist attached so people okay. can quickly scan their phone <clears> and <throat> as the food comes in and they have a playlist a similar playlist to what is to play in the restaurant right. to remind them of those good times right and then right. the addition of the cocktail DIY kits just helping people making their own cocktails at home or even the addition of peri road peru which we was which was the distilled gin cocktail that we made with yeah, yeah. sons which honestly for me was <coughs> even better than a diy cocktail because it just as soon as you got the bottle all you had to do was pour it with ice right. and soda right you didn't have to take any effort yeah. so for us we just started evolving for me personally when i look at food delivery and to your point like how do you take that experience home mm. right in in lockdown one food delivery was more about there was no choice mm. right like it was yeah 
out of a necessity that i'm cooking yeah. like you most people were cooking at home without having any help and cooking for the entire family so right. on the weekend orders used to go to the roof because you were mm. tired of cooking through the weekend you just needed a day off right yeah come second lockdown i think people started going down and going out a bit back so you you could see average order values mm. from so it was also about changing what the menu mix looks on delivery um through the second lockdown we launched three online uh, delivery yeah. brands with pita shack with uh, brun and babka king fu was to say that in 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 the first lockdown people were ha- ordering opedro and bombay candy but we wanted to give them a new reason to order as well so right. in, in just in terms of the experience you can keep improving mm-hmm. but i feel in terms of choice and what you deliver also you need to keep evolving as well so like right. the last month we launched sandwich <laughs> bar as well um mm-hmm. the idea is just to keep evolving our delivery we we are not here to compete with the other cloud kitchens that are there mm-hmm. we know that. but what hungering has as its strength and as its um, biggest asset is the team that can innovate and that can um, think differently right. and hence we have the bandwidth to be creating things like a pita shack or a sandwich shack just for two months and then have guests keep coming back to us because there's a different cuisine that they can try right in fact i was going to come to that i mean that was a brilliant initiative i did try the pita shack yeah. and uh, so these i mean you mentioned that these are digital brands right so do you, uh, are these also available in like do you see them being available in your restaurants like i mean so i we, know we, we we became big fans of it so yeah so pita shack actually we used to serve during lunch at the restaurants mm. only during <clears throat> um when it wasn't that busy because a lot of people who had ordered at home started um, yeah. you know pushing their weight around saying you know i'm at the restaurant now and i really love it and i, I have yeah. to have it yeah. um the same has happened presently with sandwich shack but we've stopped doing it um mm-hmm. only from the point of view that if you're coming to opedro you want the opedro experience and not right right but these are these are, so these so they, they mean they're not permanently there right like these no, so come like, and go yeah so what happened was like the same right it's kitchen kitchen utilization like mm-hmm. that same kitchen which was pushing out o pedro food now also pushes out sandwich yeah. yeah but as o pedro starts getting more busier and that's the hope and dream yeah. now that the restrictions have been yeah. reduced a bit um is that the restaurants get more busy and hence you don't have space um to cook for the other cuisines but right. now to be honest the way we've started thinking about it is we are already sadly we are already thinking about the next lockdown and we already are thinking what brand do we need to keep at the back of our uh back of our mind we've all we already start testing for it and just keep those recipes ready keep the design ready logo ready so that just in case of this happens again that we are ready for it you know i have to say it's you you probably the only one who's given me the most realistic answer to that till now yeah. everyone else has been you know stay positive don't think like that I'm like but what are you thinking next like we don't know you know yeah we just so don't like, know how for example with bombay sweet shop um hmm. like the it's amazed me and i i always like to be humble and honest that people buy mithai online like hmm. indian sweets online it just and it's it blows my mind every day to read the reviews um during diwali so right now like my brain is so white washed i forget when we actually had lockdown but i think this diwali like a lot of people couldn't get out i still yeah. remember the sweet message a guest sent from the us uh, on instagram dm to us and she was basically a daughter who could send indian sweets to her family in in bombay who had been right. stuck or had covid and she wrote the sweetest message saying i've never been able to do this because most of the traditional guys don't do it and right. the fact that my parents love your take on the mithai and they will be loyal customers and then things yeah. are that like that ease of ordering for guests like i was saying like if we, if i look at bombay sweet shop 2 years ago or a year and a half ago first lockdown the way our website was the way our back end mm-hmm. was um and now like we've jumped like a lot like the website yeah. is better people have the option to get express deliveries where within the mm-hmm. next 3 hours you get delivered or you get a free delivery the next day mm-hmm. now adding amazon to that um then next month we hope to do all india deliveries i think these small small milestones for us are like you know we love to celebrate it with our team because our teams haven't celebrated anything in the last two years 
yeah yeah no it's really important because i mean it's unfortunate that this whole situation came to be but i think it also forced the indian hospitality industry to kind of work yeah. forward now yeah. because unfortunately i don't think we were there yet and it's and i don't think we will be there also to be honest like hmm. i i say this to a lot and i say it to my team especially for restaurants i think bombay street yeah. shop we've been able to change the way we think and like completely um mm. with the restaurants you know like once they see the restaurant getting busy they start forgetting that yeah. you know we need to st- still keep that delivery um, yeah. momentum going right, right? and it's right. a very it's a human behavior right it's like yeah. you run after the shiny new object yeah um, and that's something like we our new plan now is like what do we need to do to full proof ourselves like hmm. i'm never going to make the same amount of revenue in delivery as i do in dine in i get it yeah um, yeah when a lockdown comes which it will dine in will come back to zero and delivery right. to start it off again is a huge process so how do you just right. keep up going absolutely i mean it's the way to go ahead but yeah. well someday someday yeah all right thank Good. you so much ash yeah thank you thank you so much all right Good. bye, bye.